Welcome back guys, I am Folygon, and we are on day 15 of Skulltober with the prompt poof. For this one, I'm going to be working off of a photograph of Kaima McIntyre, photographed by Nicholas Cantor, while being inspired by the art style of Kang Minjung, at Kangoon Art on Instagram. If you've ever seen any of the Devil Planet artwork, then that's the man. If you are new around here, click that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about digital sculpting, check out gumroad.com slash Folygon, where you can find all of my courses, brushes, and materials. So this one's going to be a little bit of a style study. The proportions you can see for the head are already pretty crazy. We have this massive dome, this giant forehead, and a little bit of this kind of like folding look from the profile, kind of like pinching in around the eyes. It's a really interesting art style, and at first I wasn't sure how difficult it was going to be. I actually found it to be pretty easy, uh, if I'm being completely honest. The total time on this sculpt was just under two hours, so not very long. But all of these are supposed to be pretty quick for Sculptober, because I only have a single day to work on these. And I think a lot of people don't realize that I'm also, you know, recording this process. I have to record my voice like I'm doing right now. And then I have to edit all of that into a video as well. So it's not just the time of the sculpt. I also have to, you know, do all that as well. So <laughs> it's a bit of a time investment. And I do have other stuff going on in my day as well. A little bit of a busy schedule this month for October, but I think it's definitely worth it. It's supposed to be a challenge. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope that those that are participating are also having some fun getting something out of the challenge. But the alien phase in this sculpt is extra strong, uh, feeling very awkward at first. I, like I said, I wasn't sure if the art style was gonna be super hard to nail down at first because of how unique it is. I, I don't know how to describe it, maybe like Angry Baby or something like that. I really like it, I think it looks cool, uh, but I wasn't sure how easy it was gonna be to nail down the proportions and the overall aesthetic. It turned out to be, like I said, pretty easy getting that larger head. I think once I got kind of the eyes in place, that's when things really started to, well, fall into place, so to speak. And from there, the rest was kind of downhill. You'll notice I work actually quite a bit around the eyes because that is where a majority of the form takes place for this character. I mean, if you break it down into its, you know, most simple parts for the head, it's pretty much, you know, just a large sphere shape for the dome. It's kind of squashed and uh, proportioned a little bit differently than a perfect sphere. And then the lower half of the face is uh, a little bit of this kind of standard shelf-like form that you would see for a face, but it's a lot more rounded and pushed forward. So if you look at it from the profile for the head here, it's kind of like pinching in and clasping around the eye socket. So that's where I had to go in and work a lot around that area because I've talked in a lot of the past Sculptober videos about how a lot of expression, pretty much all expression from the face, comes from two areas, right? The eyes and the mouth. And the eyes here were the trickiest part to get right. They're so large as well. Anytime you have this really large eyeball, this giant sphere in 3D that you're throwing into a, a head or a skull like this, uh, you run into a lot of issues. One, those eyes could kind of merge in the middle inside of the head because they're so freaking big. Uh, another thing is that they could uh, kind of look like they're peeking out the side of the head. I think there's maybe a little bit of that going on if you look at the uh, profile here for the character. Some of the eyeballs kind of like sticking out a little bit. It feels like it's not being grabbed onto properly. So I could have possibly pulled that forward a little bit more, but I think I would have lost a lot of the aesthetic from the front view. But yeah, definitely a lot of work around those eyes. Uh, you can see right now that I'm beginning to reassess, plane out, and uh, just, just kind of sharpen things up. I think I've mentioned this in a previous Sculptober video, if not definitely in one of my 2D to 3D videos, where sometimes it's necessary to just take a step back, reassess, get a pinch brush, get a trim brush, start planing things back out, and uh, just make sure that you're going in the right direction. So especially when you have something with a lot of rounded shapes, it is very difficult. That is why it is often more difficult to sculpt a female face than it is a male face. There are often more rounded shapes in a feminine face and more uh, kind of squared or blocky shapes in a masculine face. Here we have a lot of those rounded shapes and getting those plane changes to work is definitely not an easy thing. So there are multiple instances where I have to take that step backwards and reassess different areas. For one, the major plane change of the cheeks was feeling much too flat I needed to get some more volume in there. You'll see me go back through and reassess and make some changes there here very shortly. 
working on areas like the eyelids to get some of that unique feel in there from the original style. Uh, definitely kind of a weird style to nail down, but it was something that I thought would be pretty different uh, from what I normally do, and I thought it would be something fun to experiment with. Then making some proportional adjustments to different areas of the head. I shift the light down on occasion or I move my light source around in general to get a better understanding of my form. Sometimes it's really hard to see what's going on when you have a light direction just coming from one way, or sometimes you just need to completely change your material and try something new. Moving on to creating the body. Uh, for this, I just use a couple appended spheres or primitive shapes to begin uh, getting that into the general direction uh, for the torso. I am just going to be creating a torso, some quick arms, uh, so that I can use that as a base to create some clothing, some quick overalls, like the clothing from the image that I'm referencing. After I do some quick adjustments to the body, doing some stuff like Dynamesh to merge the primitive shapes together, I head up to the hair and use the surface noise function and capabilities of ZBrush to create some texture. Uh, it's not very hard to do. I actually just use the basic noise profile that comes default. I just cranked up the strength or size of that noise and applied that to the sphere to get uh, that kind of afro haired texture. So a lot of different ways to work with hair, a lot of different hairstyles. I said we'd be doing a lot of different hair throughout the course of Sculptober. So there's another one using some noise in ZBrush to create some nice texture. Then off to applying some color to the body and hair for this. I just kind of start picking colors at random, find something that I like, and then I adjust from there. So typically I will add on a base color and just kind of fill it in at 100%, and normally it's not exactly where I want it, so it takes some tweaking from there. Uh, after I find something that I like a little bit more, I'll just start painting on my surface, beginning to add in some darker areas, some lighter areas, and some warmer or possibly cooler areas. Typically on more feminine faces, I will uh, go against adding cooler areas unless the piece that I'm working from specifically calls for it. The reason for that is you have to be really careful with hand painting any cooler or shadowed areas. It can look a bit awkward in your final render if you have physical lights in a scene and then you have hand painted lighting on a 3D model. So those can often clash or not really go well together. And then after I get the face painted a little bit more, I adjust that color by filling in a little bit more poly paint at about maybe anywhere between 15 to 25 percent just to kind of neutralize some of the color. So if I overpainted some shadows or highlights or things like the lips, just adding in a little bit of that helps to neutralize and bring it back to a more clean state. Then back down to the clothing to begin adding some color down there. I was originally experimenting with some of the new features to add some clothing texture here. Uh, I decided that it would end up taking a bit too much time for what I wanted to do, and I was getting extremely, extremely bloated poly counts from using this, and it wasn't really giving me an effect that I was super happy with. So on multiple accounts, I wasn't super happy with the result, so I ended up just passing on it for this time. Maybe that's something we can play with more in the future. I've seen some questions about clothing and my process for that. So you can see a lot of that here with this character, even though we're creating uh, some pretty simple form. Uh, for this, I duplicated the body and I just filled that in with a green color. So nothing really complicated. And then I used a mask with the default mask brush to paint in around the neck and push in the geometry there to give the illusion of depth. Uh, it's not really, you know, deep there. It's just it's not even hollow, really. It's actually just kind of pushed in around the neck to make it look like it is. So I do that with a lot of stuff. I'll do that with sleeves, especially stuff for 3D printing because you want stuff to be solid and watertight. Having hollow models is not really beneficial to 3D printing unless at the very end of the process you hollow out the whole thing to save on material. That's a little bit different from what I'm talking about though. But for the rest of the clothing, I just duplicate the rest of the pieces and either mask off and delete what I don't want, like I did for the overalls, or I'll use something like a slice curve brush, which I think I used to chop off the top portion that was a little bit too long on the overalls at first to just clean that up a little bit. And then I inflate or expand that a little bit and begin manipulating that shape with my move brush to get it into position. The straps for the overalls, I'm sure by now a lot of you know, my cube tube brush, so I got that in there really quick. And then just overall proportional adjustments using things like my move brush, and then cleaning up the geometry with things like Z-Remesher. 
And then a little final touch on the overalls. A little tip here for any buttons or pins or anything like that. You can just take a sphere and push that into your surface. And for a simple stylized piece, it looks like a pretty convincing button. If it's still a little too rounded, you could just look at it from an angle with either your 3D gizmo or transpose line and squash it in a little bit. Now time to create some quick spectacles, some nice glasses. I've done a lot of glasses before. For this one, I kept the shape of the frame extremely simple. She's got a lot of rounded shapes in her, so I thought what better shape language to use for the shape of the glasses other than a, uh, a circle. So some nice circular frames, scaled them up real big, got them on the face, and then started creating some different aspects of the glasses, like the area for the bridge of the nose, which took a little while just using the Z modeler brush to get a curved surface and get that positioned properly. And then the same thing for the uh, part that goes back to your ear, the the hook, the, 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 the rusty bits, <laughs> whatever they're called. But anyway, for those, I just insert a quick cube, actually what I call a perfect cube, which is just a six-sided cube that is not available, unfortunately, by default up in the little uh, 3D model picker for ZBrush. So I ended up making my own and including that in my IMM primitive brush. So uh, just so I could have that for quick little things like this. So slap that into place, pull it on back around the ear and uh, make sure that all my edges are creased properly and then experiment with some color. I add some subdivision levels and then go over it with a quick smooth pass just so that the edges aren't super hard so that when I render the character, so the glasses don't have any awkwardly hard transitions of light or shadow anywhere on the frames. And then as a final little thing, I add in some quick hoop earrings, just get those into place and mirror them over to the other side. I actually don't even add any asymmetry on this character. Definitely a shorter one for today. So that's gonna be it for this one. If you are new around here, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna learn more about digital sculpting, there's a link down below to gumroad.com slash polygon where you can find all of my courses brushes, and materials. Thanks for watching, guys, and come on back for the next video where we are going to be working on the prompt greed.